I would like to welcome on stage Alice, Alice Woodward. Um, she's IDC director in London. She's based in London. And IDC recently conducted a study where they looked at knowledge workers. Now, knowledge workers is a very interesting type of person because they are you and me. Knowledge workers on a daily basis, we create documents and we need to collaborate with, with, with others inside the firewall, outside the, the firewall. Uh, but we also have to manage all the documents. And IDC actually broke this down into several areas where they looked at how our knowledge work is doing. Are they struggling and, and in what way are they struggling? And I think you will be very surprised to hear what can go wrong in an organization. So Alice, please come up and I will make sure your presentation Thank is on you. screen. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Um, and thanks to the Adobe team for inviting me here uh, to speak. Um, as Collins explained, we conducted a study on knowledge workers, information workers. And uh, I'm going to talk through the results and recommendations of that study. <clears throat> knowledge worker, information worker, how people work is not necessarily as part of a strictly defined process. If people need information to do their jobs, they're going to go out and get that information. So this makes it very challenging to measure how to help them for an IT department and how to help them be more productive. Many of these information-driven processes start off with one person bringing a document together and sending it to a manager. Then the information is seen as very useful. It gets shared with more people. Then a lot more people become involved in sharing the information. And you can get these huge collaboration systems going in companies that are fundamentally run on people emailing documents to each other, which is not particularly efficient. So what we've tried to do is to, we did a, a really comprehensive survey and we asked a lot of questions about what specifically do you do? How much time do you spend on it? And we've turned that into some recommendations today. Something that I thought when I saw Dirk Jan's slides, and I should have thought of this really, um, with it being Adobe, is Adobe, manages a lot of very attractive, very beautiful, very dynamic content. Today I'm going to show you some words, some bullet points, and some bar charts. I hope it's not too disappointing from a visual perspective, but I know you're going to see some very attractive visual things uh, later on. And really, this is about focusing on the insights and the numbers. When you go back to your organization, I hope some of the numbers that we have and the, the amounts of productivity that you can save or the... the um, numeric, the currency that we've put on that will really be useful to drive change in your organisation. And I'll just get the clicker. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about our methodology and then look at four areas that are important for information workers and then finish up with some recommendations. Okay, so here's the um, study methodology. It was a global online survey of 1,200 uh, information workers. Apologies, 1,200 respondents, and we split those into 840 information workers and 360 IT professionals, and we gave different surveys to each type of worker. Because particularly with information workers, what they are doing is not always visible to IT. Everybody has document creation and spreadsheet cr creation and email and calendar tools on their own. IT don't necessarily get involved in how these are actually being used. So we asked what was happening for information workers and also what IT thought. We looked at companies that have at least 50 employees and that have dedicated PCs. That's a key part of being an information worker, and I'll give the definition of an information worker on the next slide. We conducted it in June 2012, and we had a broad country distribution of respondents, as you can see. USA, UK, France, Germany, Australia, and Japan. We stuck to large um, geographies to represent the individual areas. And most of the results that I will show you today are the aggregation of the UK, France, and Germany in order to represent Western Europe. It's somewhat easier to get survey data from larger geographies, which is why we didn't go down to the level of the Netherlands. I apologize for that. Um, and, yeah, a broad range of industries and company sizes. We were not looking particularly to drive out differences uh, in industries and company sizes, although some of those did exist 
It's a, a really big survey, and if there's anything that you see as I'm going through that you would like more information on, please do ask afterwards, and I have it on the laptop, and I can hopefully find you what you need. The challenge always with big surveys like this is you get lessons learned out of the top, but there's a huge amount of detail, and it's some of the really interesting nuggets are in that detail. Okay, what is an information worker? We defined it as a full-time employee not working in IT who's connected to the internet and uses a computer to work with documents on a weekly basis as part of their job. So they, and by working with documents, we mean tasks such as creating documents, sending them around for review, gaining approvals, gaining signatures, creating forms to gather data and fill in forms. This is not all done through documents. It can be done through forms. And reproving, reviewing, approving, and signing that others send out. There's no restriction on functional area, and actually 62% of the information workers that we surveyed were management rather than operational staff. Okay, so let's start looking at the key areas, and let's start with end-user productivity. And we started by asking, how many hours do you work in a typical week? And then later on, we, we changed our view on this, which I will explain. Um, so the average across the world was 44.7 hours worked per week, which if you think 37 and a half hours should be a kind of full-time employee, how we accept it in a, a developed economy. It's quite a lot. Information workers work long hours. Western Europe, 44.3, and I don't have them on the chart, but we had some interesting uh, national variations. Um, of all the areas that we looked at geographically, the Germans worked the longest hours, 46 hours. If only economic success could be replicated by replicating uh, one point. This would be very useful information. Um, the British actually worked the shortest number of hours, which uh, was a little bit embarrassing to me as a British person. Um, I'm sure it doesn't represent me individually, I'll tell you now. Um, and we actually work, the British actually worked shorter hours than the French, which I thought the French were actually legally restricted of working short hours. Information workers work a long time. Therefore, um, improving their productivity and helping them work more efficiently is really going to impact individuals in the organisation. Okay, here's my first um, chart, and we asked about how many hours do you spend on document-related tasks? And I'm going to start by talking about productivity, individual end-user productivity. And on this chart, these are the, the blue Bars. Blue bars are personal productivity activities, and then the yellow are collaboration-related activities. And because that's quite separate, I'll look at that after the productivity part. So, creating documents, about nine hours a week, how long people spend creating documents. Researching and gathering information, almost seven hours. Filing and organising documents, over three hours a week. These are long periods of time. Um, information work is in inherently document intensive. You work a lot with documents when you're an information worker. Something we found that was interesting, just after having spoken about how long information workers actually spend at work, when we said, okay, how long do you spend at work doing each of these, actually the average was longer than the average time spent at work. So not only do information workers work long hours, they work longer than they think they work, when they actually break down the individual tasks and how long they spend on each one, they had underestimated when we just, when we just said to them, how long do you spend at work? There hasn't really been much focus on individual productivity for information work. It's not like call centre work, where there are a lot of very visible metrics of what tasks you did, how long they took, Matching those tasks for a call centre to how you make people more efficient and effective is a challenge, but at least you have the data to start with for a call centre worker. How many calls did you take? What's your average length of call? What's the longest call and the shortest call you took? With information workers, it's much harder to get this information, hence our detailed survey. Okay, so that's the document-related tasks. We also asked about challenges. What challenges do you do you work with and how long do these challenges take you? And again, blue is personal productivity and yellow is collaboration activities. Pulling information from different files and formats into a single document was the, uh, the most time-consuming 
uh, challenge for personal productivity just over three hours. Dealing with problems and time-consuming tasks due to paper was also a challenge with almost three hours. Paper is one of the areas... I haven't gone into a lot of detail in this presentation due to lack of time, but we have quite a lot of detail in the study as to what sort of things people do with paper and also what are the reasons that they think that people in their organisations are still clinging on to using paper. Surely it's logical. We work in an electronic world, we have electronic systems. The quicker we can get paper into an electronic environment, the better, and yet it's not always that simple. Sometimes paper is actually the most portable way to be able to share information. So those are the hours spent on document-related challenges. Now this table comes from the document that Colin mentioned. We wrote a, a global version of an executive summary of the survey results. And this comes directly from the Western European version of that, because we also did a, a specific Western European version. So we looked at, OK, personal productivity tasks, and we listed them. And then we looked at the hours spent per week, and we've tied that back to percentage of time wasted and organisational productivity lost. So we took the hours spent per week on each of these tasks. Then we turn that into the percentage of time spent by dividing it by 47.1 hours, which is the total time for all the tasks. Then we look at hours wasted per week. Now, this is an interesting one. Searching for but not finding documents, that is a pure waste of time. Ideally, that should be eradicated. That should not happen. We should search and find. So the whole of searching but not finding counts as hours wasted. Likewise, recreating documents because the current or the right version can't be found or got lost. Pure waste of time should never happen. The whole amount of that is hours wasted. Now, with pulling information from different files and formats into one document, and also dealing with problems and time-consuming tasks that arise with paper documents, those are not really so straightforward. Part of that time, may, that part of those tasks may never be eradicated. You may always have the need to do some form of this. And in order to calculate a believable figure and a useful figure for you to take back to your organisations for percentage of organisational productivity lost due to inefficiencies with working with documents, personal productivity, we wanted this figure to be conservative and to keep it low. We have not tried to make this look impressive, we've done the opposite, we've tried to keep it very sensible. So, for hours wasted per week with these two tasks, we estimated those at approximately a quarter of this time. Pulling information together into one document and paper issues, we've said if we could just take a quarter of that and call that wasted, so three quarters of it counts as productive. And then we put that as a percentage of time wasted, and then we calculated the percentage of organisational productivity lost. Now, where this came from is we, the survey indicated that 80.6% of employees overall are information workers. So this is the percent of time wasted on personal productivity tasks, 10.4%. And if you want to turn that into productivity loss for an organisation, it's 8.4%. Conservative calculation, this is purely on individual personal productivity tasks. Let's look at collaboration in the same way, with the same information, except this time we're looking at the yellow bars. Reviewing and providing feedback, six hours a week spent reviewing and providing feedback on documents. Consolidating and analysing forms data, and also gaining approval or signing documents. Filling in forms, managing review, merging edits, comments, managing approvals, obtaining signatures, making sure something is signed off, hours spent per week on document-related tasks. Um, in terms of collaboration-related challenges, we found gathering everyone's feedback and consolidating into a single document, so different feedback coming from different places. If somebody sent feedback via email, if somebody wrote feedback on a paper document, if somebody else turned on track changes and wrote it in the document, or if another person used comments within the document. Bringing all this together, gathering everybody's feedback. 
3.7 hours spent per week. Consolidating data from forms, bringing that into the documents where you need it. Deciphering feedback and unravelling version control problems. We did a similar calculation as with personal productivity. Some of these tasks are fully time-wasted, whereas others there's a ratio applied. And we found that 11.1% of your organization's productivity could be lost by poor management of collaboration process, inefficiency when information workers collaborate with each other around documents. And that's, that maps to 13.7% of the information workers' time. So something we called out in our document for Europe specifically, this is a cost to your organisation of €14,492 per information worker. But rather than expect you to just accept the number, um, I've indicated how we calculated. 10.4% of time wasted on personal productivity tasks for the information worker. 137 of their time wasted on collaboration tasks, and we multiplied that by 60,000 euros average information worker salary from the Europstat website. And what this allows you to do is you can take this and you can multiply it by salary that perhaps is something that you know in your organisation in order to make this figure relevant to you. Some organisations respond better to percentages, others respond to the actual monetary value. But this is a methodology you can use to work out cost savings for your organisation by improving efficiencies. Okay, the third key challenge that we looked at is security. And uh, the fun thing about security is it's not actually necessarily particularly a challenge to an information worker. But of course, it creates definitely very much of a challenge and a focus for IT. So this chart comes from the IT portion of the survey. What are the top IT concerns? What are your top concerns about information work? Ensuring security and privacy of information is critical, especially outside the firewall. Um, almost 80% expressed agreement with that. And this is really, you know, the key kind of the key challenge between information workers and IT. Information workers need to do their job. They need to collaborate with whoever they need to collaborate with. Much of that collaboration is outside the organization. But of course the security and privacy then becomes very important. We don't want to give people from outside access to our network is the next concern of IT with 60% Giving access to people outside can be a huge security challenge, and obviously people don't want to do this. We need to solve security challenge in a very subtle way, at the document level, really, rather than something at the, the whole application or whole network level. This is Documents are very granular, their, uses, their use cases are granular, and how you share is very much of a granular individual nature. Thus, the security needs to, uh, needs to work that way also. The next one is enabling easier and better collaboration with people inside the organisation. So you can see the concerns of IT do outweigh their driver to enable this. Now, of course, the challenge with information workers is if you don't enable them to do what they need to do within your IT systems, they're going to go away and do it anyway, and they're going to put all the private data in Dropbox. If they need to get it to an individual outside the organisation, they're going to go and do it. Um, hackers and... Uh, Incoming challenges is a growing concern. And just to connect with that, we have experienced an information leak in the past 12 months, 21% of European organisations. Now, many of those go unreported in the press, although some of them do get reported. Certainly in the UK, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of reports of them. But even then, there aren't, uh, there's not the level of reporting that to say 21% of organisations actually have suffered this. Many of these information leaks are relatively small scale, small scale, but the risk of a dramatic information leak is huge. It's not just to, your, to the security of your systems, but it's a brand risk. It's all sorts of um, problems can come up. It can wipe thousands off the shareholder value. It's really, 
really something that's critical to stop. Just to explain the colour on the slides, we've got the dark blue is activities related to document security and government, governance. So you'll see security and governance is a, a very major concern. Activities related to review and approval are the yellow. So these are also um, some IT challenges. IT are aware of the need to address these challenges. The green is related to doc interacting with documents on mobile devices. Document portability is a major concern for IT, and we'll move on to talking about the mobile part shortly. Who do information workers collaborate with? This is something else we have a reasonable amount of data on. We went into some detail, and I just wanted to put the, um, the chart on. There's also quite a lot of variation between the individual European countries in this. For some reason, um, France have a lower level of collaboration, a lot more individual working. Who do you collaborate with? People in my group who sit near me, 37.5, so almost 40%, slightly over a third, collaborate with people who physically sit near them. Now, Dirk Jan mentioned the transformation that we're going through in business at the moment, and also as consumers, moving towards mobile. It is hugely transformational, particularly when you look at organisations that are still struggling with paper documents. If you collaborate in this way, Piece, handing pieces of paper around is absolutely fine. As soon as you work in any sort of distant environment, it's much more of a challenge. And many, many of us now, we work with a mobile device, or we work from home, or we work in different office locations. Physical presence is much less important, which means that electronic information has to be able to move around and be available where we need it. People in my group who work from other locations, a fifth of collaboration is done with those people. People outside my group who are part of my organisation. So again, collaboration isn't just about sharing within a group in the organisation. And also, it isn't just about sharing within your company. 20% of collaboration is taking documents outside the firewall. Thus, it's something that IT is right to be concerned about, but also needs to make sure they enable. Because if you look, the challenge we have is that enabling collaboration is seen as slightly less important than ensuring security and privacy. But actually, those are both two sides of the same coin. If you're not enabling collaboration, you're actually putting the security and privacy of your organization's information into jeopardy. Okay, the fourth item is called working across multiple devices. And uh, what we had a look at here is what's happening with mobile devices and also what, IT th what our information workers are doing with mobile devices and also what IT think information workers are doing with mobile devices. Now, at the Western European level, there's not a huge amount of difference between the two. At the country level, there's some big uh, differences. So 49% of information workers are using smartphones for business. 10% of those 49 are using their own smartphone in a bring your own, well, I say, I was going to say in a bring your own device environment, but that implies an environment as something where we have controlled bring your own device and IT are supporting bring your own device and of course that's not necessarily the case, we didn't test that. They're bringing their own devices whether IT want them to or allow them to or not. 16% of information workers are using tablets for business. This, this surprised me actually. Of executives, yes, um, I would say that looks reasonable, if not, uh, if not perhaps slightly higher. But 16% of information workers in Europe are using tablets for business. That, uh, I, I find that quite surprisingly high, bearing in mind the, uh, the early stage of the tablet market. And 7% of those information workers are using their own tablets. So again, bringing their own device. They may not... Um, be doing a great deal with it, but obviously they're looking to, to use them for business. And that means that 9% of information workers actually have a tablet provided by the organisation. Just to do a check on what IT think and what is the reality, as I've already said, 49% use a smartphone for work, according to information workers. Now, when you ask IT, only a third, they think only a third of their workers are using a smartphone. In um, 
I believe the results in, in Germany, this was a, a worse kind of correlation. Germany were much more underestimating the number of smartphone users at work. Now, the, only, the one reason for this that could be is actually IT are not thinking specifically of information workers, or they may not differentiate between information workers and the rest of their workforce. So this could be a third of the whole organisation. But even if we t divide a third by 80.6%, which is the number of information workers, we get 40%. So we still have a difference between 40 and around 50. IT is not quite understanding that people need these things and people are using these, uh, these devices. Talking about uh, tablets, again, um, because they're new, um, they're going to enter organisations very, very quickly. Adoption is, is likely to ramp up in the, uh, to reflect what's happened in the consumer world. So 13.8% um, use a tablet for work. And uh, having looked at the country level uh, differences between information workers and IT, they're much bigger country level differences, but actually IT is within 0.3%. Uh, for this at Western European level, which is pretty good. They're absolutely on that. In addition to those 13.8% of workers using a tablet, 13.6% do not use a tablet now, but expect their organisation to provide one for them in 12 months' time. So they're expecting that organisations are really going to start picking up on, uh, on tablet usage. 6.4% do not use a tablet now, but expect to be using one for work in 12 months' time, and those could be the, the bring-their-own people. What do information workers want to do on mobile devices? We asked, what are you doing now on your mobile device, and what would you like to be able to do? Not surprisingly, using email and calendar is the most popular response. 80% of users with a mobile device are using Email and, cal email and calendar on it, which is actually um, somewhat low. Um, I wouldn't really want to be one of the 20% who's carrying it around and not getting email. Um, reviewing documents. Uh, send a document to someone. View your own documents. So these are the information worker tasks that they really want to be able to do on a mobile device. Now, depending how mobile an individual worker actually is, they could be on the road all the time, or they could be doing intermittent business travel. What people really want to do is they don't want to be a bottleneck. They don't want to be the person who's out of the office and cannot view a document or cannot edit or cannot get in because they're out travelling on the road. They want to be able to review and send off or... Um, Review and send being the most popular. They, um, that's what they want to do on a mobile device. This makes document portability really something that is important now and is going to ramp up considerably into the future as more people start using more devices, particularly with tablets. Fitting a document to the form factor of a smartphone is more of a challenge. But for a tablet, there's a much more natural usage of a tablet to work with documents. Whether working with documents on a tablet is a compelling reason to adopt a tablet, I'm not particularly sure. Another area that I look at is business analytics, looking at business insight and dashboards. And those applications are actually sometimes the first thing that organisations put on a tablet. They deploy tablets to executives and they deploy business insight on those tablets as a kind of first step to say, look, here's a really useful device um, try and get mobile. But certainly the, uh, the ability to, to review and keep things moving around, keep these collaborative processes moving while you are mobile yourself uh, is a key important factor. Okay, so uh, recommendations. What does it all really mean? For end user productivity, I gave you some figures and st some statistics, and we have the model of, that will be available to look at in the document when that's released on the 1st of October. You could save 20% of your organisational productivity based on the assumptions that we've made and based on a conservative calculation. We have the details of the calculation if you'd like to plug in your own organisation's figures and push those out within your organisation. This is something where you really can save money. And we've done a huge survey so that you don't hopefully have to.
There are opportunities for both personal productivity, which is perhaps harder to quantify, and collaboration, speeding up a collaboration process. It may be easier for your organisation to decide to invest in the collaboration aspect just simply because you have more executives involved, people at a higher level, people with a louder voice in the organisation who are more influential, who will be able to say, this is a pain, please help me deal with it. Personal productivity is much more about which particular group of individuals you happen to have involved. But to go and save money and productivity on collaboration can be tied down to the bottom line. In terms of collaboration, it does happen. Collaboration outside the organisation happens more than IT knows, and it really is vital for IT departments to enable this. Some things in organisations, if you don't allow them, they they go away, like certain restrictions on invoicing or setting up customers, for example. Those are core transactional financial processes that have to be adhered to. They cannot be changed. Information workers are completely outside that. If their job is to produce and distribute information, they will do it with their personal productivity tools, and you have to be aware of what they're doing and support them in doing it. This, of course, comes along to security. If people go outside the collaboration framework that you've permitted, your security becomes risky. And actually, the easiest way to enable this security is at the document level. Documents are what's being shared. Don't make life more complicated than it needs to be. Implement some form of document security. And another chart that I didn't have time to share talks about what people are already doing in terms of security, whether uh, encryption or passwords on files or other um, ERM and other types of information. So if you're interested in that, please uh, let me know and I can share that information. And finally, multiple devices. As more tablets make their way into the organisation, this will become more important. It will become something that people want to do, something that people like to do, and something that brings them more benefits. And uh, it also, it's, it's easier and more attractive for you to enable it on, um, for working on a tablet than it would be on a smartphone. Really, our recommended next step is to conduct a gap analysis. Look, so look at what's happening in your organisation. Look at what the information workers are doing. Look at what... Um, IT think they're doing, how much do they collaborate, who do they collaborate with, where are the security risks in this process, how much time do paper documents waste, again we've got more information uh, on that um, if you would require it. Um, so there's a huge amount of data there but I hope some of it will really be useful when you take it back to your organisations and I'd like to wish you real success. Mm -hmm.